It's a first visit for the Euro Pro Tour to Tull Farris here in Ireland and the players have been absolutely blown away by the quality of the place. One man to look out for a little bit further down the leaderboard is Mark Young. If he can make a charge today and get to three wins, that gets him one away from that quarter of a million pound four win bonus. We set down discount Mark Young and that's the reason he's got to do the slot this. Fantastic. Mark on the mark again. Welcome to Newmarket Golf Club near Aberdeen in North East Scotland. This is the final event of the regular season on the PGA Euro Pro Tour, when the top 60 in the order of merit will be decided. Of course, up at the top of the money list, thoughts centre on grabbing a top five place and promotion to the Challenge Tour. Mark Young and Dave Coupland are already guaranteed, while Billy Spooner, currently fourth, is making his presence felt here. Billy Spooner is the man with the target on his back here at Newmacker Golf Club. His seven under par total is two shots better than anyone else. Unfortunately, this event has been shortened to 36 holes due to winds and rain in the opening couple of days. There's a packed leaderboard behind him though, and with it now turning into a real shootout and low numbers possible, anyone can still come through and win this event. Just behind him, James Wilkinson and Richard James at five under par have experience of winning on the tour before. And a little bit further back at four under, Mark Young is of course a man to look out for. Three wins already this season. If he did get that fourth win today at Newmacker, that would mean a quarter of a million pound four win bonus. The wind is really strong here. Conditions aren't much fun. It's cold and there is drizzle in the air. There's plenty of birdies and eagles to be had, so anything could happen in this final round. Storm Alley, the first named storm of the season, breezed through, causing the tournament to be reduced by 18 holes. But John Morgan, it's not affected the form, the play of a young amateur by the name of Callum Fife. Yeah, Callum, going along strong. High, high flying ball flight and takes the flag and nearly goes in on the second bounce. What a shot that is. What a young talent. The first hole, exactly 400 yards. This is Will Whiteoak, the pride of Shipley Golf Club in Yorkshire. Not oh, very nice, too. Lots of nice golf courses up in Yorkshire. And a nice shot to boot. A little bit of chubby checker there, keeps it below the flag. I mean, we've had some great weeks, Phil. Tol Farris, great champion as well. Three wins under his belt, Mark Young. Now we come to this beautiful golf course, New Macker. Down the left-hand side of the fairway here for this young man. Tight right pin. One hop, and there's your stop. What a shot. Well, early indications suggest this is going to be a rare old shootout. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that it's just Calm down a little bit, the weather. It's been pretty brutal out there. Nice roll and sinks it. Very nonchalantly done. Look at him. Very calm, cool and collected there. Got the bubble hat on. In many respects, the man under most pressure is Mark Young. As Kit told us, if he wins today, he's going to be a quarter of a million pounds better off. And I think, what would you use your quarter million on, Phil? I think I'd probably go and get myself a house, wouldn't you? Or a boat, what would you have? Well, for him, it would finance two or three seasons on the Challenge Tour. Well, that is the biggest objective, but, you know, coming with that, you'd probably get some good sponsorship under your belt. Nice putt in there from the amateur. I don't think he'd be amateur for very long. He keeps playing like this. So, Young, par the first. This for birdie on the second. Almost a gimme. In it goes. Yeah, winning breeze confidence, and Mark is definitely full of it. That is for sure. You wouldn't put it past him chucking in a low one today. Now, after a cracking second shot in here, finishes it off nicely with a birdie. Oh, and the rain comes down again, Phil. Oh, we've already had 
a near two hour delay for rain much earlier this morning and it will not cease. Uh, hopefully they packed enough towels, they'll need them. Maybe a chamois might be in the bag as well, just absorb that, that rain off the grip so it doesn't slide on you. Maybe they use two gloves instead of one or maybe no gloves at all. Just hopefully they've remembered their brollies. We see there's a little bump and run, didn't take the borrow like he thought. That was James Wilkinson on the first hole, another of those in contention, as is Richard James, who was runner-up in the Tour Championship a couple of years ago. Yeah, Richard, good player. Really is up the slope here, up a little tier, straightens up. Not the B, just a little bit slow, but that's down to the rain on the ground now. And you can see the reeds there just blowing, wisping away. The breeze is getting up. Not easy, widen the stance. Oh, and that's drifted right, that's going to be painful. Hard lip out that. Unsettling start, if ever there was one. You start to think, it's not going to be my day. Yeah, you do get that vibe. You definitely do get that vibe. It's not the start you want. No, Richard. That's just shy with the putt, the first one, but it was an awkward one, straight up the hill. Just tap this one in, move to the next. Gets that done. Well done, my friend. I can tell you Billy Spooner part of the first. What about on the second? Here's Kit. Super tee shot from Spooner here on the par five second. He's gone right over the corner of the dog leg and he's now just got 234 yards to this pin. It's going to set up quite nicely for him as well. He likes to fade the ball. And with that pin over there on the right hand side, he can start it off at the middle of the green and work it in really nicely. The ball slightly below his feet is also going to help that. What is a negative though, it's into the wind, but a big boy like him, he should be able to flight down a long iron and get it all the way back to that green. Yeah, we're, we're going to be able to see him squeeze this one, Kit. Like, like you said, ball below his stance, he's aiming well left. Look at those feet. Oh, look at that drift on the wind. He's staring it down, he's walking after it. Oh, and he's got it. Oh, just shy of the dance floor. Look at those trees, Phil. My goodness. Well, I'll tell you what. It really is autumnal up there now, maybe even wintry. Billy Spooner made an eagle on the second yesterday, an up and down required for birdie 24 hours later. Well, here's our lefty Chris Gain. Played many a time with Chris over the years. Good dancer. Good swinger of the ball. And I tell you what, finds the dance floor. Not easy in these conditions. Really got to probably go two clubs up, hit it easy, grip down the shaft a lot, control your spin. Ball flight is a must. Cameron Raymond, par on the first. And maybe a chance for birdie on two. I suppose judging the reaction on the greens, which are very moist now, John, is quite difficult. Sometimes you get a skid. Yeah, you do. You get that skid. That first bounce, I mean, they're probably firm going in. If you see the sun just poking its head out for, well, hopefully for the rest of the day. Billy right at the front of the green. Up the tier, we got to go here. There's the tier. Just get it over that release. Oh, just a little bit more ounce energy, and that was right by the flag. Four seasons in one day. When he played his second shot, it was Dreek, as they say in Scotland. <laughs> now the sun's out. The sun is out. The jackets might come off as well, you never know. Gainey. Oh. That's always frustrating when one's bang on line, you just forget to just hit it. Going with the claw grip. Working well. Tim Rice was the winner down at East Sussex National recently. Are we going to see another Irish champion crowd here? Could easily happen, Phil. It really could. This one's tracking, and what a lovely roll after roll, and in the centre of the hole. The leader is Billy Spooner. He was a child star, winning the World Kids Golf Championship at Pinehurst, aged just eight. This year, he shone on the Euro Pro Tour. Billy, you've recently gone back to an old coach. You were having a great year, so what prompted that decision? Just a little bit of basics. My swing was getting a little bit out of sorts, but I was 
I was getting away with it really, to be honest. Like, my swing wasn't great. Yeah, you had the ball on an absolute piece of string, it looked like, in that opening round. Do you feel that you're in the best place technically now that you've ever been? I think everything mentally. Obviously, my swing feels great. My course management is a lot better and I'm like, maturing as a golfer now as well. So that, it's all coming together now. Yeah, the mental side is huge. You mentioned maturing as a golfer, but to me it seems you're maturing as a person as well. You were yeah, a very yeah. young man when you first got yeah. on the Euro Pro Tour a couple of years ago. Do you feel more comfortable in your own skin now? Yeah, I'm obviously spending a lot of time with my dad, who's always believed in me, really. He's starting to make me believe, mm -hmm. and that obviously helps. I've got a great team around me. Obviously, going back with Nick Hyam, but it's, it's all coming together now. I'm really excited for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, the form is there on the course. How much are you enjoying life just on tour in general as well? Yeah, it's good, yeah. All, all the lads are brilliant. You have a good crack with them and days like today, you obviously spend a lot of time with them because you're indoors. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you just got to stay focused at the same time because if the, if the centre's back out there, you've got to be ready. So. Yeah, how difficult is it on days like this? And we've had it throughout the whole week. Yeah. You're in and out and there's weather. You don't know what's happening. Everyone's looking at the weather forecast. Yeah. How do you stay focused and ready to go when you need to? I think I've, I've obviously got my game plan sorted before the tournament started anyway, but you've just got to be prepared for the weather. You've just got to go out there and do the best you can, really. And sometimes it's hard, but sometimes you can battle through it. He shot a 67, John, in the pre-tournament pro-am to finish second. And here... A put to extend his lead. Yeah, well, he's showing his form. Left below, right, lock it and rock it. Two good shots to the front of the green. Nice chip to here and slots it in. Nonsensely done, Billy. And nice to see him now. He's gone back to his old coach. Always breeds a lot of confidence. You know, you started your golf there. He knows you inside out. Got his dad right close to him, feeding him with great ideas and great vision and confidence. As we see Mark now just all oh, right on the low side. Bogies sting. Yes, they do. He's staying in the brain for too long sometimes. Now, Raymond. Oh, you are going to see a lot of this. Camera getting found out. All hitting low ball flights under the wind. Trying to keep it underneath the tops of the trees as well, where it gets more effective once it goes above them. No, this bogey putt, sneaky one here, Phil. Yes, this to be trailing by four. He's a really attacking sort of young. He can put together a whole series of birdies, so he's not out of this yet, but it is quite a deficit. It is. We know what he's made of, though. We've seen it all season. Great stuff. Now, down the right-hand side of this fairway for Raymond. Over the tree tops we go. Going to get affected by the wind. That pin right at the back. Oh, and controls it well. Great shot. For Chris Gain. Well, he's still looking for his first birdie of the day. And he continues to look. And I think he fancied that one. Just as a uh, little disheartened kind of as it rolled past the right hand side of the hole. Just, oh. What did I do wrong there? Obviously a misread. Now Raymond to finish off a nice hole here with a birdie. And does it. Very good indeed. Spooner, winner of this season's second event, the Matchroom Sport Championship at Harleford. Is he going to be on the double? Yeah, Torhan's place. That is Harleyford. Mm, great result for Billy Spooner. Yes, and despite making a, a solid start, his lead has been trimmed to just a single shot from Cameron Raymond, with three other golfers only two back. We shouldn't be surprised with the tight leaderboard, though. In 2015, the last time the Euro Pro Tour schedule included Newmacker, England's Paul Howard prevailed by a single shot, and everyone left thoroughly impressed with this relatively new course. Yeah, Newmarket Golf Club was built and opened in 1990, designed by Dave Thomas, built by local people, for local people, and it's been a great success. And since then, we've opened another 18-hole golf course here called Swale End in 1997. Fantastic design golf course, a challenging golf course, a tight golf course, good greens and good features, um, woodland, heathland. It's got a mixture of everything, a really good golf course. And when good players come and they enjoy the golf course, it gives us a really good uh, boost. We're just happy that the golf course has withstood the, 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 the high winds and the wet, uh, and hopefully we'll return next year to, to see them. 
The green kibs have been superb all year. Um, with challenging conditions, we've come out of drought and now we've come into uh, the, to, the, to the storms. But they've worked really hard and obviously getting the course in this condition is, is superb and, and an asset to the golf club. Numak is certainly to Spooner's liking, but can the tall lad from Lincolnshire return south of the border with the trophy? These conditions are so tough out here today. The wind is swirling, it's gusting, it's never really consistent. You've really got to pick your moment to play your shot. And as well as that, there's intermittent rain coming down. You get heavy little showers, then you maybe get a little bit of sun. You're on and off with the waterproofs. It's a nightmare trying to keep everything dry. I honestly cannot tell you just how difficult these scoring conditions are if you're not here to experience them. And another thing, it's cold. Six, it feels like. Nine is the actual temperature, but with that wind chill, my hands are starting to go numb so I can only imagine the players are experiencing the exact same horrible feelings. Yeah, it looks like his hair gel's just about to run as well there, Phil. I mean, he, he won't like that. He likes a good hair, hairstyle. Well, his tongue's not gone numb, that's for certain. No, no, McCleary. My goodness, I haven't seen this man in donkey's years. Good player, this fella. Been on the European tour. Lovely par three this, and cool, that must have looked very attractive in the air. Just a half a club shy, but that wind just calls an effect there. Now, this is Thomas Robson. Fifth hole, just off the green, but a birdie opportunity nevertheless. Yeah, so close to the fringe, good chance here. Oh, slots it in, Phil. A hat with a bubble hat. That's interesting, that's a new one on me. You're right about Jamie McCleary, absolutely full of experience and a really nice guy as well. Yeah, he is. Lovely chap. And uh, nonchalantly done, walked after it. He knew it. Grabbed the right-hand side. Nice putt, that. Same air do as me, Phil. Good man. Low maintenance. Now, this is Richard James, who I was telling you about, was second in the Tour Championship in 2016, the year he won the Euro Pro Tour Rookie of the Year. Won the Lucas Championship that season at Close House. Also tied second at Caversham Heath and clearly returning to form. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, he's a class out. He's a good player. Thinks long and hard about the game. Gets his job done. Look at this rain pounding down on Chris Gaines' back as he swings away with driver. Now, first port of call is to find the short stuff and he's done that. Great drive. We're warm, Kit isn't. Another fairway found for Billy Spooner here, 147 yards left into a pin that again is tucked on the right-hand side of the green, so that's going to really help and suit his fade. There is a little bit of a tier that's near that flagstick, so he's got to land it quite precisely, but he's been controlling his distance wonderfully well in these difficult windy and soggy conditions, so I'd expect him to set up another birdie opportunity here. Very much team Spooner this, Billy the player, there you can see his father, Andy, the caddy. Yeah, straight face club here, and look at that hold off. He's really going for the low left to rider, pin over on the right hand side. He's bailed out left, and a bit of the side spin there, helping it feed down onto the green, using all the contours. You can just see the, the little pond there that's going, <laughs> going on the right hand side of this. Very shows how much rain has fallen, and look at that follow through. Chris Gain. Six straight pars so far, and this seventh is no bargain, playing almost a quarter of a, a shot over its par on average. Yeah, no surprise in these conditions, Phil. And what a shot that is from Chris Gain. Oh, cracking drive, cracking second, and I'm sure that's just a formality. He'll go and tap that one in for his birdie. Now, conversely, the eighth has been relatively friendly. We've seen a multitude of eagles and birdies here yes yeah, 17 in fact as we see a nice big kick off the right hand side just I tell you what I only needed half a club more and that would have been very close and there we go gain makes a gain he does I like the pun man I like the pun now, Billy 
This will really set the ball wrong. Nice big monster putt in for Birdie will be handy across this green. Newmacker looking in cracking condition. Green's holding up extremely well. And he's very trying, trying weather that these boys are having and having to play through. Well, the Texas wedge being taken by Joe Herati. You mentioned, John, 17 eagles on this hole. What about the 18th? Yeah, could happen, but nah, just a bit shy there. Good chance there for the 18th eagle on this hole. Well, I'm sure that'll be a tap in birdie. Near the end of his round, Nick Watson has climbed to five under and looks set to establish the early clubhouse mark. But after making a par on the fourth, and indeed on the fifth, Spooner retains his slender lead. As for Thomas Robson, there's ground to be made up. Yeah, now Robson in the middle of the ferry. Lovely drive. Sun has come out to play finally. Again. Oh, and nearly goes in on a fly. Delay reaction on the spin, and well. Wow. You can't see him missing that one for a birdie. Cracking shot. Robson in the groove on seven, as was this man, Chris Gain. They're looking for consecutive birdies. Yeah, nice birdie charge to go down. Handy here for Chris. Nice delicate number over the little ridge. And he's played that to perfection. Very nice. Chris Gain in the mix. And also in contention is Ireland's Cameron Raymond who is relatively new to professional golf, as Kit discovered. Cameron, you turned pro at the end of last year, so what have you been up to since then? Um, I turned and I played in, on the Algarve Tour. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of events there, not much. Then went to the Q School here, struggled in the final stage. Got a bit of a ropey card and um, just been trying to get a few starts, really. So have you been playing much competitive golf through the summer? Um, not as much as I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. um, few starts on the Jamaica tour just to kind of keep up game sharp I suppose and trying to stay ready for when I got a call really you know. How have the realities of being a professional golfer compared to what your expectations were? Um, similar. Mm -hmm. I kind of knew what I was jumping into really you know. Um, just try to play my own game and not change it. I think a lot of people change stuff when they turn pro mm -hmm. and make it struggle a bit so I just stayed doing what I was doing and eventually it'll come true. Like. What are the main strengths of your game? Um, drive it fairly straight and wedge play is decent enough so and then when the putter gets going I have a good score like yesterday. That's a pretty good formula for a <laughs> course like Newmacker. Did yeah. you think it would suit you when you got here? Um, well I didn't get a practice round okay. <laughs> so I didn't know what I was, I didn't have a clear really like so I came down here and I hit a few balls. It's quite a strategic course you know you need to know where to hit it off of different tees so how difficult does it make it when you've not seen the holes before you step on them with a card in your hand? Yeah there was, there was one on my, on my back nine there was one hole where I thought I just hit a two iron short of bunkers. And the lad I was playing with hit two iron about 60 yards left over trees. He had a bit of wedge, you know, I was hitting six iron. <laughs> but like, I don't know, like that was for instance one hole that I did birdie, like, so I don't know. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Like if you, if you strike it out in the wind anyway, you know what I mean? It, it kind of suits me a bit better to have a bit of a longer club in to flight with it a bit, you know? So I was happy enough, really. Well, despite his less than ideal preparation, John, 67, in the first round and two under today. Yeah, it obviously suits his eye, Phil. It really does. I mean, it's a gorgeous golf course, lovely and tree-lined. And there we go, another sublime shot off the tee here at six. Giving him himself another chance of a birdie. Well, after that tremendous approach shot, it's only fitting. Yeah, Robson birdies seven up to six under for the man who's missed six cuts this year. Yeah, the way he's playing, you wouldn't think that, that's for sure. And all right. From distance, nine times out of ten, you go for whole side, but no, that's not good enough for him. He wants to hold it. Nice little bonus there. Sean Laurie, whose uncle is the 1999 Open champion, Paul. A great hero in these parts. Cool, not off. Yeah, Paul's a lovely chap. He's in Craig's son as well out on the EuroPro Tour. He's improving over the years, getting stronger and stronger. As we see Billy Spooner doing exactly the same as Craig. Oh, and that's left in the bunker, and that could be plugged. That came down from a distance. 
from a height now the amateur phil well last year here at the scottish area team championship callum fife at newmacker shot rounds of 64 and 62 he loves the place look at this cool i nearly i well i jumped off my seat then i thought i was gonna go straight back into the into the hole but what some delay reaction on that spin i can see the just a uh, little bit of water lying up high there as Billy takes no notice of that and plays a sublime bunker shot. And here we go. Nice different angle here to see it. Great camera work. This nice slow motion. Look how he pops it. Flies it all the way to the edge of the green. Nice bit of soft landing. And that'll be a tap in par. Will White Oaks next assignment. First stage of European Tour qualifying school at Frilford Heath next week. He will go there on this evidence with plenty of self-belief. Cool, yeah, not off. And I'll tell you what, I like his demeanor around the golf course. Nice shot in there as well. And Chris King, like you said, this one for back-to-back -back birdies. Phil, gets it. Thank you. Now this man knows how to win. Now the amateur, after all that backspin, cool, it was all of 25 feet, all delayed and Zooming in, he deserves a birdie. Inside right, gets it. Great putt. The sixth is called We Dunt. Is this going to be a big juice for Raymond? <laughs> it could well be. Beautiful iron shot here, but no, straight shove to the right hand side there. He knew it. Just, you could see it not turning. Maybe just a misread a little bit. White Oak here for another birdie to get the six under par here at seven. Lovely shot in. Oh, drains it. Nicely done. So Spooner tidying up for par on six. Yeah, this should be a formality here, Phil. Yes. There are two Scots in the top five, including the nephew of a local, nay, a national sporting hero. Cameron Raymond is trying to bolster the already high level of success by Irishman on the tour this year. And yet steadfastly staying at the top, it's Spooner, one clear, still on track for a victory that would mathematically seal promotion to the Challenge Tour. The action from Newmacker continues in just a moment. Welcome back to the Hawks Hill course at the splendid 36-hole complex that is Newmacker Golf Club near Aberdeen. Nick Watson leads in the clubhouse in this 36-hole event with only three shots separating the foremost 14 golfers. Billy Spooner, who shot that superb first round 65, has maintained his status as the leader, while amateur Callum Fife is writing quite a story as well. You can see here for the amateur, ball well above his stance, aiming well right, counteract where this ball is going to be flying. Now, this could be headed left if he's not careful. He looks to be leaning the other way. It's right, and there's trouble there. Down the pass she goes. We've seen a sequence of birdies on this seventh hole so far, but for Raymond, a par would be escaping jail. It would indeed. Nice chip from under the trees. Oh, nearly endangers the hole and he's gonna have a sneaky one coming back now all up the hill why do care nice birdie on the last hole at seven nice swing good balance oh nice hop bit of spin no nice very good indeed now raymond can he get that par? this will be some up and down it after being under those trees and in the thick rough down this left hand side of this hole. Oh. Now it probably would have been going in with a wedge in hand, unless he was in a spot of bother off the tee. That'd be a poor bogey. Richard James is so far down the money list, he needs a very big result indeed. 
to make it to Desert Springs for the Tour Championship. Every shot for him today counts. And with all the numbers on the 10th, here's Kit. The 10th hole is an absolute stunner to kick off the back nine here at Newmacker. There's water flanking it all the way up the right and wrapping round in front of the green. The fairway itself is undulating, so you'll struggle to get a level lie for your second shot. And anything too far left, you've got this tricky little bunker lurking. It might not look like much, but you'll be amazed how many balls get caught up in it. Too long and you run down into the water. For your second shot, you turn around and face this stunning little green. If you're aggressive off the tee, it can be as little as 70 yards into that green, a little bit more conservative, and you might have just over 100. But the surface itself looks inviting. That wall in front frames it beautifully, and it's a lot wider at the back than you can see from your second shot. If that pin is there in the center, this is a definite birdie chance to start your back nine. Yeah, and by the looks of it, getting a long way back off the team. Might have gone with a six iron just for safety. Come up short of those bunkers on water, like Kip was saying. Left himself a lengthy shot in. Oh, and it's worked. What a shot. Controls the spin beautifully. Down the breeze, this hole. I mean, you can hit four iron, get it right up there by the water's edge. Leave yourself, like Kit said, no more than 60, 70 yards in for your second. Now, after a drop off the path, the young amateur here, faced with this difficult one. Got the contact. Oh, that's not bad. He might have suspected this was going to be a pretty special event when he birdied the first four holes in round one. And from where he was, I tell you, that was a pretty good outcome. Yeah, I can't see the bottom of the flag, as you can see. Just see the top of it. And he played it extremely well there. Phil. Okay, five under. Don't write this man off. Lots of experience under his belt. And a lovely shot there. Getting the spin. Obviously a lot closer with the tee shot. Now White Oak has sailed his ball onto the green in two. This for an eagle to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Oh, yeah. Drift in. Oh, and he's got it. Nonchalantly done. Every putt just strolls them in. Again, lose of confidence here, Phil. Well, he won last year's Tillman Trophy and he represented England in the home internationals at Moortown before turning pro. He's got a good pedigree. Yeah, well, that says it all. Clearly aiming just inside right and he's got it. Centre cut. Not the only Scott going well. Also, young Callum Fife who is a really good footballer as well. He was approached, you know, as a junior by Aberdeen, St Mirren and Motherwell. But nowadays, golf is the focus. Callum, you're still an amateur, so what yeah. were your expectations coming into this week at Newmacker? Uh, nothing major, just go and play golf, and I, I've, I know I can play round round, good round here, and just got to keep the ball in play and let the putter do the, do the work for me and see, just try and shoot good scores. You've certainly performed really well this week. What have been the highlights of your amateur career so far? Um, I've played in a, a lot of, uh, in the Scotland team and Jack Leglees and been away all over the world with the Scotland team and stuff. So I've had experience playing big tournaments and uh, that's helped massively, like coming in because it's just a, another round of golf, really. So, what's it like to be able to represent your country? Oh, it's fantastic! It's amazing. Um, just so proud to represent the country and. Uh, Got to play well, a lot of practice, hard work is finally paying off, so, yeah. What have you learned from playing all around the world, different courses, different conditions? Yeah, it's more a lot of different courses, as you said, weather, stuff like that, cultures, you've got to learn. It'll be stand you in good stead when you turn pro, so, um, yeah, really good. And presumably that is the aim for you to turn pro. What's the sort of timeline for you going forward? I was I was going to go this year, end of this year, go for Q skill and stuff. But the way things have panned out, I'm going to wait maybe next year, try to get Walker Cup and then turn pro. So, yeah, that's the plan. Well, going for some good vital experience and getting it here at Newmacker. This young amateur aspiring to be a Walker Cupper. Don't blame him. And that's a beautiful putt. Keep doing that, you'll get a pick, my friend. What an up and down, and that gives Fife, for now, a piece of the lead. Yeah, it does indeed. 
And to watch for the future, I'm sure. And again, to finish off with a birdie, gets it here at 10. He's had some birdies now going into the back nine. So James, we saw the third shot. Can he convert? This man attended the University of South Florida. Conditions there, very different to here, but he's coping. Coping very well. Yeah, definitely different. See Robson here at six under. Just half a club out here at 10, that's for sure. That wind just calls an havoc for some of the players. And we see Spooner now at eight. And the right rough ball below his stance. Had a hold off finish. Trying to cut one in there from left to right. Oh, and look at the banks he's had. Off the bank on the right hand side and forever getting better. That's giving him a chance there, Phil. Yes, birdie to reclaim the lead. As Callum Fife, one of the co-leaders, now takes on nine. Yeah, what a crack in par three, Phil. I mean, 181 yards this night, though. Par three, Walter on the right-hand side. That bunker on the left-hand side, going to see a lot of action today because the one place you don't want to be is down that right-hand side. Nice bank behind this green as well, Phil. You can feed it off that. All trying to gaze the wind. Look right down onto this green. Very pretty. This hole called Dinner Drukit. Don't ask me why. Mate, your guess is as good as mine. Sounds lovely, though. That's this amateur puts another great swing on it. Now, slick putt here for Spooner. Down the hill we go. Surprised it didn't get a little bit closer after that lovely kick off the bank. You can see the speed of the putt. Oh. God, just missing on the left hand side there. He's owned the par fives on the front nine here. Eagle birdie on the second. Eagle birdie on the eighth. Yeah, growing in confidence, Billy Spooner. That's for sure. Over the years he's been out here on the Euro Pro. Getting some vital experience, just like this man is today and this week. Uh, that was a bit heavy-handed. But putting from well off the green, you never really know what's going to come out. One times out of ten, I just chip that one. Like an eight iron or nine iron back at the stance, just feed it up there. Let's Billy polish that one off. So Spooner climbs to nine under. This for five to remain just one back. Oh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. And that's going to be a two-shot swing now. Yeah, frustration's there. Spooner birdies, he bogeys. There's two shots deficit between those two. Now, Robson, bogey-free so far today. This to be three under for the round, seven under in total. Oh, you beauty. Holds a gobbler. Mark Young looking on, saying, well done, my friend. Spooner just keeps on repelling threats, stoically retaining a one-shot lead from White Oak. What's striking is that so many players have a realistic chance of being victorious, and in that number, you can't ignore Richard James, hoping to launch a low back nine. Yeah, in the trees here, playing a low one. Nice, good camera work. Oh, and just bangles over there. That's the first hardest bounce we've seen at the back of this 10th green. Great drainage around this golf course. A matter of battering it's had with the winds and the rain coming in. The Spooner steps on nine, looking down at this beautiful green at, here at Newmacker. And that bunker, one of many, I'm sure, have been in that bunker this week. And look at that rotation from the big man. Trying to hold it off, feed it in there from left to right, and just, well, just hung it out there to dry a little bit. Now, this John over the water is not an appetising shot. White Oak, though, seems to have made good contact. In fact, too good. Cool. He's gone miles. 
just a little too thin. Something that Billy Spooner needs to guard against on nine. Spooner's faced with a relatively intimidating bunker shot here on the par 3 ninth. He's playing back towards the water, which is never easy, especially with this wet, heavy sand now. He's going to have to hit a little bit closer to the ball than if it was dry and soft. Also, it is sloping away from him, but I think he'll just play a little sort of chunk and run and let gravity and the slope of that green ease the ball down to the hole side. And you've seen that little leaf by his ball. He's not able to move that. He will be next year when the rules come in and they change. Don't want to be overconfident here, but a very confident bunker shot nonetheless, and that's passed. It's a shaky one coming back. Like Kit had it, just get it out and feed it down towards that flag. But he went the long route, flew it all the way. Shows the confidence of the young man. Well, White Oak troubles. We've seen him go miles over the green. Poor shot from inside the trouble. Onto the pad, dropped it here. This is his fourth. It's a good one, and it is. Eliminates the damage. Going to walk away with a bogey. And that's a good bogey. Yes, some drop shots feel an awful lot better than others. Now, Thomas Robson, again, nicely positioned on 11, playing solid golf. Yeah, he is indeed, and what a shot. Look at that. Dynamite with the iron played today. Repairing his divot, which I like to see. Ooh, new one here for James. Got it back at the stance with a putter, bumping it out of it, hop, skip, and a jump. Unfortunately, not, not easy to judge the pace of a putt like that. Couldn't have been an easy lie. Suddenly, around the turn, players are tripping up. Will Spooner keep a clean card? No, he will not. Found the bunker. And in the end, it was a four back to eight under par. So out in 35. A little shake of the head, but you know, we all make mistakes, is how you bounce back. Now, that interesting shot from James. Just past the flag. Can he convert, get his par? Oh, that's gonna hurt. Just drifted out to the right, caught the right edge, and yeah, on a good chance is tenth. Once the tee shot's in good position, you fancy your chances, and yeah. That'll get on his nerves a bit. The par 4 13th only measures 399 yards on the scorecard, but the tee shot is like threading the eye of a needle. It's 235 yards to this point. That's only a long iron or a hybrid for our players, but if you're offline, there is all kinds of trouble lurking. Over on the right-hand side, a deep bunker. Beyond that, water. And if you bail out too far left, those trees are going to block your shot into the green. Once you're in the fairway, it's just 150 yards to the centre of the green from this spot here. The putting surface itself is guarded front left by a three-pronged bunker. And once you're on it, a steep tier runs right through the middle. It's absolutely vital that you find the tier that that flag is cut on on the final day. The 13th on average score is the second toughest on the course. And John, Chris Gaines' bogey-free status today is under threat. Yeah, this is third shot, spot a bother off this tee for Chris. Up and down to save his par. Where is that pin? It is on the lower tier, and that is right towards the water. Now, has that found it? We'll have to wait and see. Robson, though, going serenely. Centre cut, eight under. Oh, man, on a mission, springing his step. Playing with Lloyd Saltman, Mark Young. Two guys with lots of experience. So we see gain here. Four shot, just stayed above ground. Only just, though, a little bit of the ball in the water. And, oh, spot a bother. Now he's in the wood chippings the other side. One shoe off, sock off. Not the path to success. Richard James. Annoyed with his bogey on 10. The key, as John said, though, is to control your emotions and bounce back, which he looks like doing. Yeah, what a beautiful shot. You know, some people can see it as a, 
you know, puts a bit of doubt in their mind. Some use it as fire and say, right, I'm going to bounce back. I'm going to get that baby straight back on the next hole, which James looks like he's going to do. Now, can Spooner do it? Bogey the ninth, and that's going to be a par at 10. Beautiful hole, 10. Right outside the clubhouse, looks away from you. Water all the way down the right and in front of the green, like Kit was saying. Cracker. Spooner still tied at the top with Robson. Here's James to get within two. And James needs to get the ball rolling, definitely, and the balls need to start dropping. And that's the first one, and hopefully of many for Richard. I don't know about the 13th being unlucky for Chris Gain, but it's proving expensive. Yeah, this is his fifth now, Phil. Up and over the mound, off the wood chippings, zooming in. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, that would have been a bogey and a half. Wow. Now, what about five on 12? Fife's found himself in a tricky situation here over on the right-hand side of the 12th fairway. We're in these beautiful trees, but that does block his view of the flag. He's got a couple of options. He could go left of this tree just about 15 yards in front of us, but that requires a fade of some 30 yards. He can draw it as well, though, and I think with the way the ball is lying and it's slightly above his feet, that's probably what he's going to go for. He's got a nice set of goalposts about 30 yards in front with those two trees to go for. All it's going to take is about 10 yards of draw off of that bunker and he should be able to chase it into that front entrance to the green. From here, you're just looking to save your par. Well, John, given his football background, he knows all about goalposts. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got to thread it through the Ivan Eel here. This is a very small goalpost and he's gone the route Kit was saying. Gone with the draw, feeding it up, getting it in that funnel on the left-hand side and doing a good job at that. Slow down a little bit, Paul. Come on. Be his friend. And here we go. We can see a butcher. See where he's aiming here. Pumping it out there. Getting it below the trees. Little bit of draw. Holding it off. Lovely. This 12th. Fearsome. Bogies outnumbering birdies. Three to one. We've had 17 double bogies. Four worse than that. And Will White Oak not enamoured by his second. Yeah, strong hole, that is. Just like this hole, 13, calls an habit for Chris Gain. This to limit the damage, make double bogey. Gets it. That's <laughs> some up and down from the wood chippings <laughs> inside the trees. He's been here, there and everywhere. The 11th, a much simpler proposition. Yeah, a couple of locals coming out to watch how it's done off Billy Spooner here. Coming up a bit shy, and that is a miss club. A good club out there from Billy. Big divot as well. Now, White Oak at 12, the hard 12th. Cracking golf course this. I mean, especially this 12, really tight as you like. Biggest defence around this golf course, not the longest. Just shy of 6,800 yards, par 72, but fraught, fraught with danger, with trees and water and deep bunkers. Brilliant track. Robson, though, just keeps finding fairways. He's going about his business here, Phil. Coming in under the radar, playing some great golf, nice big strong bounce, gets the hop required, and realistic chance of a birdie at this hard 13th now this to prevent successive bogeys. Yeah, the putter's been his friend for most of the day. Oh, and it's gone astray. It's gone astray. All on, with their woolies on. It's cold out there. And that'll be a tapping bogey. Bit of frustration, I'd imagine, as we see Billy here being that club out with his approach here at 11. Has left him this well, 30 footer. And that's not too bad. So, five for a par. 
You would have watched White Oaks put with interest and learned from it. Yeah, definitely went to school there, Phil. Always nice to go second if you're not quite sure. Clarification there that you've got the right lines. We see Robson here for another birdie at 13. To get a nine under. Oh, and he's done it. Look at the fist pump. He's loving it. Watch out, Billy Spooner. Five under today. On this display, there really is no doubting Thomas. That's Thomas Robson, the newly installed pace setter in the Newmacker Golf Club Challenge. In a city famous for its oil industry, the leaderboard remains fluid, but it's clear the new man to beat is Robson. One in front, five holes away from a maiden win on the Euro Pro Tour. Join us after the break. Summer is quickly being transformed into autumn in this part of the world. But in the Newmacker Golf Club Challenge, the metaphorical sun is shining on Thomas Robson. Five under for the round, nine under in total. Robson leads by one from Billy Spooner with the amateur Callum Fife occupying third alone now. As they say, it's perfectly poised. And well done to Daniel Young, the leader in the clubhouse with rounds of 70 and today 68. Yeah, top round this in these windy conditions from Daniel. Now Spooner looking way right here. It's got some serious bend on it. Oh, and it's just going to stick. Oh, no, just into the first cut. Down the right-hand side of 12. Now Robson at 14. Where is he? Up and over the tall trees or through them. Oh, and what a shot. But what news of Spooner on 12? Spooner's ball has just slid about six inches off the right-hand side of the fairway here on 12. Now, ordinarily, that's a bad thing. Actually, I think it might work in his favour here, though. He's playing back into the wind, and from 138 yards, where that pin is positioned right at the front of the green and with these soft surfaces, it's quite easy to spin the ball back off the front. Coming out of the first cut of rough like this is just going to take a little bit of spin off it. That's going to help it fly through the breeze and not spin back too much when it lands on the putting surface. It's a very accessible pin for him there right now. Yeah, Kit's hit the nail on the head there. Really being able to take the spin off this ball, which is a must from 138. Into this breeze. Oh, look at the size of the divot cut in this one, holding it up. Trying to get the spin and got it. Great shot from Billy Spooner. I was about to say, if someone offered you par on 12 and 13, you'd sprint to the 14th tee, but maybe Spooner wants something more now. Yeah, he definitely does. I mean, he's probably seen your man get the nine under and thinks, right, I've got to put my foot down. Got to play some shots. He's done that. So you see the young amateur just coming up just shy of the green. Can Robson get to double digits under par? Well, he's been reading his putts brilliantly. This looks like it's got to go, go, go. Oh, right in the heart of the hole. I mean, perfect read, just a half a roll more, if that. And he knows it. Always frustrating, Phil. When you do that and you walk off the green and someone says, never up, never in, makes oh. you feel really good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're like, get on your bike, son. Don't need it. I know that already. Yeah, frustration there. Another great putt, though. You've got to take the bonuses and the pluses from it. Right, James. Sounded a good strike. Taking dead aim at this tight right pin. I'm afraid for Cameron Raymond, it is all unravelling. We saw Chris Gain coming to grief on the 13th hole. He's come to grief on the 12th it's going to be a double bogey back to two under yeah that's gonna hurt but Billy Spooner had his eagle eyes on that putt on a similar line just outside Billy Spooner's ball so Billy had a nice read 
We'll see that in a minute as we see the young amateur at the front of the screen. Now, he needs to chip something, needs something special. It's looking good. Oh, and it's a great touch. Amateurs have won on the European Tour, on the PGA Tour, Phil Mickelson famously. Yeah. What about him winning on the Euro Pro Tour? Can't be discounted. No, definitely not. I've seen it before, way back a couple of years ago at Mar Hall. Well played, and Billy, there, going to school. Great stroke, and that's his birdie. And back to the top of the leaderboard alongside your man, now James. Need some birdies, got one on the previous, so can he get another? No, races that one by. As for one of the joint leaders, he's arrived on the 15th. At 210 yards, the 15th is the longest of the par threes here at Newmacker. It's a long club off the tee and it doesn't get easy once you get down here to the putting surface either. It's broken up with some really clever undulations into three or four different sections. Now the pin on the final day is likely to be over here on the left hand side. The safe shot of course straight at me but it all slopes away so any ball is going to run out towards the back of the green. If you do take on that pin position you come up a little bit short there's a cavernous bunker just waiting for you and once you're in that sand trap it's a devil's own job to get up and down. The hole named Dave Thomas after the course designer but will it be kind to this Thomas? Yeah, well, we'll wait and see. Here we go. Now, majority of the players at 210 will be hitting five irons on four irons, trying to drift it in there. And that one coming in a bit too hot to trot. And that has gone down and away. That's going to be a difficult up and down. Oh, what's going on here? In the trees, threading it through. Oh, no, he's going over the top. Up in the clouds it comes, where's he going to land? Oh, there it was, just beyond the flag. Just move a little bit, flag. There it is, just at the front of the green there. Robson's chip shot from over the back of the 15th green is actually a lot trickier than it probably looks on screen. There's a fair bit of undulation and elevation change here. Firstly, uphill to the green. Then once he's on it, there's a little upturned saucer hump just short of the pin. If he doesn't land this in exactly the right place, this could easily filter six or 10 feet away from the flag. Yeah, now how's he gonna play this? Looks like he's got the wedge out. I'm gonna chip it onto the fringe feed over a little mound and then weave its way down to the flag he has done that no a bit too heavy handed yeah now that's not his sunday best drops it on there nicely probably could have gone more of the aerial route fly it to there get that grab he looked like he had a nice line but here's the young amateur down the right hand side of 14. Good angle, this. Oh, the spin just about helped. Top the Scottish Amateur Order of Merit last year. He's impressed here. And to save his part, this would be a bonus. Oh, the putter's been working, but that one, at least he gave it a go. A little bit of work to be done to save his bogey. And this is White Oak after that shot out of the trees. You see it just come up just shy, putting from off the green. Should start turning about now. Yeah, just a bit of work to be done there, Phil. Hmm. There is indeed. That also applies to Robson trying to nudge this one in for what would be his first backward step of an otherwise flawless day. Yeah, he'd be a bit gutted there. I mean, off the tee, that iron shot must have looked absolutely brilliant right over the flag. The butter's been working too. The iron play's been sublime now. The young amateur column here off the back of the green. And... Hey, oh. Sick, man. Every time. Out, man. God, that's got to be frustrating. That looked in with about a couple of feet to go and just drifted that little ounce more to the left. And oh, always frustrating those. Now, 
we know where this one's breaking, Phil. Off the right-hand side, just outside right if you want to dribble it. Right edge. Oh, he's two outside right and hit it firm. Because of that, White Oaks stock plummets. I can tell you Robson's has also taken a dip with his bogey on 15, but a revitalised Spooner is riding high, back in front. As for Chris Gain, well, at five under, three to play. He's looking for a big finish to maximise earnings, ranking points, and consolidate his position in the promotion spots on the Euro Pro Tour. In light of that, a birdie on the 16th would be very handy. Cool, wouldn't it? Nice third shot out of the bunker. Nice splash, good with the short game, Chris. Getting a lot of grab there, too much grab. Bit of raking. He does that at home. Brownie points with the misses. From the middle of the 14th fairway, from the mayor's office, Billy Spooner sets up a birdie chance. Excellent. Yeah. That's a, a beautiful fill shot in there. Got the low ball flight, late spin. Really controlled it well. Now gain for his birdie. Well, um, Gets yeah, it. Yeah. Brilliant up and down. Oh, what a cracking hole this 16th is. The par five, we've just seen Chris Gain make birdie, but you can really tackle this hole in two shots. Good drive, get into a narrow part of the ferry, then you turn for home, round the corner, big dog leg left to right. You can open up your shoulders, you can lay up to this point, but it's very narrow. Get the three wood out, get it round near this green. Even if you're in the bunkers, you could do a Chris Gain and get up and down and make your birdie. But a real tough cookie, this one. Fraught with danger, tree lined as you like, and the wind is blowing. And Robson having to deal with the disappointment of his bogey on 15. Put that out of the mind. Don't dwell. Yeah, good drive is a must if you want to get there in two. Just hold up there, ball. Hold up there. Yeah, I think you'll have a stance. Now, here's his swing. Nice swing. Lots of lag. Really releases the club head and the hands. Good balance. Spooner for a two-shot cushion. Wow. Thought it was going to drift a bit of left to right, but it didn't stay dead straight. It was a good stroke, just a misread. And one goes a begging. For White Oak, three shots gone in the last five holes, but still just about time to recover. Yeah, he's got a chance here, Phil. He really does. Good swing here at 15. and must give himself some confidence for the last three holes coming in after this. Oh, and it's a great iron shot. Oh, go on. Uh, best of the day there at this tough 15th. How Billy Spooner would love to duplicate that. Before we see that, though, Robson on 16. Well, here you go. Out with the three wood. It's a good strike. Has he got the height? Has he got the carry? Is he going to land softly? He got a little oh, bounce off the back of the bunker, and that has worked to his advantage. Feathered up onto the green, and he's on the putting surface in two shots. Down the tier he's got now off the left-hand side for his third, but look at this. Lags it. Nips it off the top, lovely. Just carries the bunker on the left-hand side and weaves its way up onto the green. Man's on the crest of a wave. Now, is the putter going to work this time, Phil? He's due. No doubt about that. Oh, well, great too, mate. well, one of his playing partners said it all to his own commentary. Will, great too, mate. And it was. Yeah, very good too. You won't see many of those. Nice no, spooner comes to this 15th it's a good strike it's a bit right he's staring it down he likes it oh and why not oh come down with snow on it beautiful goal shot pin eye on the left hand side now 
Now, this is the one down the tier. It's going to break off his left hand side. You can see the little contours there just running through the middle of this green. This is going to start breaking about now and feeding down. Might come back the other way. It tried to, just didn't give it enough beans. That's going to be a little knee knocker for his birdie. And here it is. Where's this form come from? The last few weeks, tied 45th at East Sussex National. Then he missed the cut at Telfaris. Here, he's been brilliant. Yeah, crazy game, isn't it? I mean, it's what confidence does. He's found something, something's clicked on the range and off he's gone. As we see Spooner here for a two. No, just drifted a little bit too much from left to right. Good stroke again, though. Playing some good golf, Billy. You know, throughout the season, the HotelPlanner.com Euro Pro Tour has produced a series of nail-biting finishes. And here we have another. Callum Fife refuses to go away, but he's now two back of the co-leaders, Robson and Spooner, both nine under. Holes running low as the Newmaca Golf Club Challenge reaches an intriguing climax. Welcome back to Newmaca Golf Club and the 15th of 16 events that make up the 2018 Euro Pro Tour schedule. In common with so many tournaments that have gone before, this is the definition of tightly contested. Young, Brooks and Gavins share the clubhouse lead. Out on the course, the pace is being jointly set by Thomas Robson and Billy Spooner. But don't discount the amateur Callum Fife. Yeah, he's still in there with a shout. Especially now you're still on a par five in the middle of the 16th fairway, out with three wood. Meets Eagle, you never know. It's a good strike, but he's leaked it right. He's leaning. Yeah, it might be bunker bound. There's a deep one over there. With a barnstorming finish, so many players could yet lift the silverware, including Richard James. Yeah, big drive. Going in with an iron here, Phil. Oh, good strike. Trying to feed it in from left to right. Oh, and what a shot. What a shot. Time to deliver, and he's done that. What about White Oak joining the party after that bonus two on 15? Yeah, out with the iron two, Phil. Good strike required. Oh, he's trying to feed it in there. You can see him twitch and get right. And that's going to not going to be too bad. That's going to be a fast shot from there. Down the slope. Will he punt it? Will he chip it? I'll go with the chipper. Up on the penultimate hole. Guess what? Robson's found the fairway. A recurring theme today. 431 yards this hole. Yeah, just playing over its par for the week, Phil. Oh, what a bounce when luck is on your side. He's playing great golf. Nice bit of fortune there. Could have gone anywhere. Billy Spooner made a birdie on 16 in round one. He would love to do the same this time. Yeah, big drive, must hit fairway. Bunker lurk in the far side, you aim at that and drift it off it. And where has that gone? Cool, it's a monster taking over the corner. Now, the amateur, young amateur finding the bunker, like I said. In a nice splash shot, release, release, and that's not bad at all. Where Chris Gain was earlier, he made an up and down from here. I think whatever occurs now, Johnny's done enough to really catch the eye. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, you come to a pro event after playing all your amateur golf and you're in the mix, shows you what potential you bring to the table, you know, future wise. Yeah, it's bright. Oh. He thought it was going to be fast, just like I did. That's left in well. Not a, a nice putt to leave yourself. Downhiller, a little bit of turn to try and get his birdie. Now to that 
inaccessible tucked away back right pin on 17 what a birdie this would be for Robson for the lead oh chance burned he was a bit quick there that's the quickest I've seen him but very short going back that time for the young man I think he knows it that's why he shoved it slightly to the right but his putting has been excellent just wonder today are we going to see a late spurt and see the crowning of King James, the pride of Abu Dhabi Golf Club? He's chatting with Kit. What were your expectations coming into this week? Well, I haven't played at all, I'll be honest. Um, I played once since Manning Teeth, mm -hmm. one round of golf since Manning Teeth, so I've hardly played, so my preparation hasn't been great. But I felt quite relaxed out there yesterday. Um, just. I played with Dave Boot, which probably helped. Um, we're good friends, so I ju we, it just felt like a normal round of golf, really, which was nice. So I think I need to take that into today. When you earn your living playing golf and you've got a club in your hands almost every minute of every day, does it sometimes just help to kind of step away from it and, and kind of freshen the mind a bit? Yeah, I think I'm one that practices almost too hard. Like, I get too technical at times where I'm not really... Like, two years ago when I played well on this tour, I didn't... I did practice a lot, but I was more playing and f get my feels. And um, but now I've gotten too technical a little bit, so I take it. <laughs> haven't played for like three weeks, and it seemed to work. So yeah, two years ago, your first year as a professional, you came fourth on the order of merit here on the Euro Pro Tour. Looking back on that now, what are your recollections of the season? Um, it was a weird season. Like I was nowhere, and then I won, um, and then. Kind of had a steady, had a fin second place finish in Caversham, um, and then didn't play that great, and then went to Desert Springs and knew what I had to do, and then to do that was nice. Um, and then last year I was looking forward to the Challenge Tour and had a couple of injuries, appendix out, middle of the season, and it kind of it ruined my season really. But uh, and I uh, took a long break off in the off season just to get away from it really, and. Um, it was just last year was pretty much kicking the teeth, so it was tough to come back from that. The appendix is gone, but he's still got the stomach for a fight. This for Eagle to get within one. Yeah, brilliant, Phil. I mean, the fire's still in his belly. Oh, and that one just missing low side. That was a good stroke there from James. And yeah, he'll be back. Too talented not to. It won't get him down. Use it as fire. Get your back, back yourself onto that challenge tour, man, and give yourself a good crack at it. I'm sure it will happen. Now, where did Oak? Slots that one in, makes his birdie. And up on 18, I reckon if Chris Gain holds this, he will remain in those promotion slots going down to Desert Springs for the final event of the season. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and there you have it. I mean, par at the last there gives him a round of 72 under par, six under par, like you said, Phil. And yeah, right in the hunt for that top five place at Desert Springs now. Now, this will be some up and down. Make his birdie out of the bunker on the right, gets it. Back on the fairway, here's Kit. Spooner again using that fade off the tee to devastating effect here on the final par five, the 16th. He's now got just 207 yards in from the perfect position right here on the level bit of the fairway. There's that big bunker gaping in front, but there's actually a lot more room between that and the front of the green than it looks from this position. It's slightly uphill, but with his power, he'll be able to get an iron there. And if he can make birdie, he's firmly got one hand on this trophy. Well, here we go, Kit. Crack and drive, like you said, taking on the corner, using that big fade to effect. Now, five iron on four and in his hand. Got a feeling it might be the five. It's got to go. That breezes into him. Bunker lurking short. We liked it. Oh, and I think it is in that bunker. Just shy of the green. That's going to be an awkward one from there. The par four 18th is a really dramatic finishing hole here at Newmacker. 
359 yards on the card. You can lay up, but I think with the tournament on the line, we will see guys reach for driver. It's a lot more open than some of the driving holes on this course. And to here, it's 300 yards. So if you really want to open your shoulders, you can actually chase it up towards the green. One thing to be careful of though, this bunker here on the right hand side will be position Z. We all know that tricky little 40, 50 yard bunker shot is the most difficult one in golf and no one wants that with the tournament on the line. If you can get it chasing up here though, it really shoots through up onto the green. Tricky pin position for the final day, right up here at the back. But as you can see, it really opens up into a beautiful bowl of a putting surface all uphill to this back pin. If you have laid up, you really don't want to be putting too much spin on your approach. I just come up a slight tier here. Anything landing at or just short of the flag can easily spin back off. But if you do open your shoulders, get your ball up onto the green and give yourself an eagle opportunity. What better way to close the deal here at Newmacker Golf Club? Expertly described, but will it be expertly played? Well, we'll soon see, Phil, if they get it on the green, I want what they're eating. I tell you, it's a super long way. No, good strike required with the driver. Now has he got the line? And he's got it into that place Kip was telling about. Just missing that bunker. Nice spooner in that bunker. Decent light. Pops out, lovely, and look at that. Made one really good sun save already today, but his only bogey of the round came on the ninth after finding the bunker, green side. And Robson probably with a good 80 yards to go, coming in nice and low, trying to take the spin off it, like Kit said, you don't want too much spin. Oh, and look at that, controlling it beautifully in the shadows you can only just see it getting a reaction from the crowd they're loving it spooner didn't convert opportunities on 14 or 15 but delivers on the 16th that is huge from the big man billy great up and down from the bunker as we see wide oak here the 700 the getaway under gets it three on the trot but just a little too late. Now, Robson, what a finish this will be. I'll go straight up on the board as 10 under if he slots this one in. Billy thinking, and there's the fist bump. He knows it's important. He's put the ball straight into Billy Spooner's court. Another lovely stroke. And a flawless round of golf, just the one blip at 15, and what a round, 66, 10 under par. I feel like I've hopefully achieved the top three, which was the initial goal. Um, everything else from here is a bonus in my eyes, so I'm feeling pretty relaxed and, and happy, to be honest. Numerous permutations have been reduced to just one. It is Robson or Spooner. It is indeed. Now, a Spooner got what it's... He needs needs a birdie out of these last two holes to seal the deal. Good drive. Oh, and a nice second. Sets up a lovely chance here, Phil. Well, I suppose, miraculously, if White Oak or Five make a two on the 18th, they're still in it. But it would be miraculous. Oh, what am I saying? Not so miraculous. That was so close, Phil. What a shot from there. He can't see it. He's going by the reactions of the crowd. He's giving it away. He's saying, what a wonder shot that is. Shot of the day for me. Now the young amateur staring it down. Oh, right over the flag with the spin. What two cracking shots that is. Spoon has left himself eight feet very slightly up the hill here, and it's a very straight one for birdie on the 17th. I don't think he needs to go outside the hole. If anything, it might wiggle a hair from left to right, but the way he's been putting, you've got to fancy this one to find the bottom of the cup. We'll come back to Spooner shortly. Now on 18, Richard James. He's not going to win, but he's easily going to eclipse his best result of the season. 
tied 13th at Clevedon. Johnny's better than that. He is, and it's not going to be the last we see of him. I hope not anyway. It's another lovely shot in there. He's got a lot to give, a lot of game, a lot of heart. Now Spooner, moment of truth. Can he go at the last with a one-shot lead? Oh, he can't. It drifts right. And that is now. I mean, there is a chance going up 18. Get a good drive away, get in good position. We've seen him dancing it round that back pin today. And the way he's playing, you wouldn't put it past him. Now, come on, James. Annoying, but he's not played an extensive schedule, and by my reckoning, if my maths can be trusted, he's not done enough to be at Desert Springs in Andalusia for the grand final next month. I reckon he'll be about 65th on the order of merit at the end of this tournament. Yeah, that's a shame, but he's a talent, and hopefully we'll see him back, like I said earlier. Just a two blitz on the card, four birdies, and gets him a two under round, and... Grand total of seven under, and a nice wee smile there. Nice Spooner, driver, up 18. Birdie needed for the win. Oh, and it's a big one. Oh, and he's dissected the fairway. It's a monster. Five. Can he finish a tremendous tournament on a high? Shame. It's another imperious drive from Spooner down 18, and he's now got just 95 yards left to a flag that's cut on a little shelf at the back of this green. Too much spin, he'll catch that slope, and it will come rocketing back away from the flag. But if he can control the trajectory, control the spin when it lands, and keep it up on that level, this 18th hole is a great opportunity for the birdie that would seal a second win of the season for him. Here we go, after that wonder shot from out of the trees, leaving himself for just a tiddler here for his birdie to get the nine under. Gets it, what a hole, what a finish. And what a change in fortunes, ruining no doubt those three bogeys from 10 through to 14. He will be definitely will be but what a finish what a tournament for him now the amateur we don't want to see any misses come on not this in and that's a great tournament for the young lad great experience just that one blip at the end of the first nine there coming up with a bogey and that's a nice round of 69 eight under bar now the man of the moment what can he give us 95 yards is Kit said, coming in nice and low, I'd imagine, trying to take the spin, cutting it in there. Big divot up. Oh, he hasn't got it up near the flag. And he's just holding on. A little bit of a tear there. Ooh, what's going to happen here, Phil? Well, it's all about this, but this for victory. Oh, and that was always left. Chances, though. Yeah, just the last two holes for Billy Spooner. Chances for Birdie. Didn't convert. Taps this one in. We're headed to a playoff. See that juicy card he's made of himself there. That one blip on the ninth hole. The rest all birdies. Nice round of 69. 10 under. And it's not over yet. Indeed, for the fifth time this year, a Euro Pro Tour event will be decided in sudden death. The playoff participants will be Robson and Spooner. Gentlemen, it's back to the 10th tee. But before that, let's take stock and take a short break.
The Newmacker Golf Club Challenge has been so entertaining and there's more to come. Thomas Robson and Billy Spooner have gone into extra holes. A sudden death playoff for the £10,000 first prize. It starts on the 10th, called O'er the Water. The champion will be O'er the Moon. And here we go, out with the iron, Billy. About a four iron here, get it up near that bunker on the left-hand side. Beautiful par four this 10th, 356 yards. And he likes it, you're in Kreuzer's shot there. And there's that bunker I was telling you about, just shy of that, and that'll leave him no more than a wedge. Ah, for sand iron, it may be. Now Robson doing exactly the same thing, got the power iron out. Now, whose advantage is this, Phil? I mean, I'm kind of going for Spooner. He's fresh off the golf course, straight to the tee, ready to go. And this one not really catching this, maybe a little bit looking for it there. Didn't quite get the strike, and he's a long way back. Now, first shot in, put the pressure on. That's the key in match play, which this essentially has become. It is indeed. That is all it is. Match play now, straight head to head. Coming up a bit shy there, a bit of work to be done. From significantly nearer, an easier task it should be for Spooner. Yeah, I want to love the club in the bag here. Coming a little shorn off. He likes this shot, little drifter from left to right. Oh, and he's overcooked it. From position A to position Z. Advantage Robson. Well, earlier today in regulation play, we saw Will Whiteoak over the back of that green, but that was from the bunker. Spooner was in position A, taking a free drop from the path. And there's our main man, Ashley Weller, there. Making sure he gets the right drop, right ruling. Good man, old Ashley. Works hard. Seen him all through the year, so all the PGA. Now, Billy, up over the bank we go. Oh, it's a good chip. It's a good chip. Oh, one extreme to the other. Well, under the circumstances, one of the best shots he's played on the Euro Pro Tour all season, and he's played plenty good ones, let me tell you. God, what a touch for a big man that is under this pressure as well. And he's going to go in and hit this one in for his part. We must reiterate, if he wins, he'll be mathematically guaranteed to be on the Challenge Tour next year. Promotion will be his, no ifs, buts or maybes. Well, that's a lot of pressure that brings as well, as this man's trying to prove a point. He hasn't had the best of seasons. He's on fire this week. Playing good. This is tracking. This is tracking. Oh, what a cracking putt. We go to another playoff hole. It's going to be the lengthiest playoff on the Euro Pro Tour this season. The previous four playoffs were all decided on the first extra hole, not this one. Yes, number two, playoff number two, and we go to 18. Tina it up on the right-hand side, Billy Spooner out with driver. Can he replicate what he'd done in his full round? He's given it, what for? My goodness, both feet off the deck at impact. That's a big drive down the right-hand side, and that's not too bad. Nice lie. Look at this. He doesn't hold back here, Phil. Oh! Launched it. What is Robson's response? Yeah, Tina up on the left-hand side. Robson. Nice swing. Likes it. Picks the tee up pretty swiftly. And there we go, fair away. He represents a lovely course down in Dorset, Parkstone Golf Club, and they'll be watching this with great interest. Already proud of their man. Yeah, and so they should be. Nice course down that neck of the woods in Dorset. Southwester, like myself. Oh, here we go. Can he put the pressure on? He did it first hole, first playoff hole against Spooner, got it on the dance floor. Spooner made the mistake, can he do it again? It's another lovely shot. Got the club in, not the line. That sets up another good chance. 
Remember, Robson birdied this in regulation. Spooner made par. Yeah, gripping down the shaft a little bit there. Ball above his stance. Can't see the bottom of it. Gone for a run. And it was straight down the throat of the flag. Great shot there from Billy. Wonderful scene here on the second playoff hole as the sun starts to set and the shadows lengthen here at Newmacker. Both guys have hit lovely approaches in. They look a pretty similar distance. We might need a referee, but it could be a case of who goes first and holes first wins this event. Yeah, a bit of a flip of the coin here, Kit. Who's going to go first? Like you said, great scenes here, but it's going to be Robson just outside. Now off the right-hand side, just the right edge of this one. missing low side and the door's ajar it doesn't matter who's involved on what tour it is you can't beat a playoff you can't I mean it's intense every shot counts it's mano a mano and this is it this for the win to guarantee really challenge tour status next year with two wins under his belt it's en route and it's missing left we could be going again Phil we could be going to a third playoff hole. Bit of work to be done by Robson. Well, this is great stuff. Spooner. Oh, he's missed so many birdie chances on the back nine in regulation, and another one goes astray there. Will it cost him? It's back to the 10th. The third extra hole. And here we go. Deja vu. Out with the iron. Look to be a good swing. A little bit further right than the first one he hit. Only a fraction. What a tee shot. A little bit closer to home as well now. By the way, the record on the European Tour for a playoff is nine extra holes. I don't think we'll have quite enough light to do that. <laughs> no, they'll definitely be bringing their cars out onto the golf course and putting them on, that's for sure. We like Bagger Vance. Now, Robson, teeing it up on the left-hand side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he likes it straight down for the tee. Focus individuals, and that's a better tee shot. Long way back, though. He's going to be going in first again. It worked last time. Here we go. Wedge in hand. Breeze slightly down. Oh, is it a bit leaky? He's leaning. Oh, he's got the bounce and the spin. And he's on the green. Hey, can't you lucky stars, man? Had a good bounce. Now Spooner doesn't want to do anything like he done first time around. Learning a lot here. Get the spin. Oh, he likes it. He's shouting at it. Oh, and here it comes. Golfers from the Boston area have done so well on the Euro Pro Tour this year. Dave Coupland winning twice at Fox Hills and Witchwood. Jordan Risdale winning at Cavisham Heath. Billy Spooner, one win already under his belt. Is this going to be the second? Robson's job to prevent that. Definitely. And this one breaking off the day. You can see him aiming left of the hole. Is it going to move that much? I didn't think it would, and it hasn't. Great pace putt. Just overborrowed. And the worrying aspect for Robson is that law of averages suggest that sooner or later, Spooner is going to knock one of these birdie puts in. You would think so, but pressures of, pressure is a funny thing, Phil. And here we go. This for the win. And he yeah. gets it. Billy Spooner, new macker champ. Brilliant. Great performance. And what a thrilling finish, John. Phenomenal finish, drama all day long. Congratulations, Billy Spooner, an amazing tournament. And look at that. Oh, showing all the love in the world. 
Billy Spooner becomes the third multiple champion on the Euro Pro Tour this season, and what a way to get the job done. Thomas Robson has the consolation of climbing to 23rd in the order of merit, but success goes to Spooner. Billy, congratulations. Always an exciting way to win a tournament. Tell me your emotions. Yeah, I'm buzzing. It's, um, it's pretty much cementing my challenge to a place for next season, so um, I'm so happy. Now, we've got a beautiful evening now, but it has been testing conditions this week. How have you coped with those? Yeah, my, my game feels brilliant. I've done a lot of hard work with my coach, Nick Iam, and uh, most importantly, my dad, who's just been on the bag this week, first time. He's got 100% record, so I think he'll be staying on the bag for a bit longer. Now, thoughts turn to Tour Champs. What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, just going to go there and free up and just keep playing the way I am. I'm feeling, well, I'm obviously in great form and I'm just going to take it into that. Good stuff. Congratulations. Thank you. Spooner sits third on the Order of Merit and joins Young and Coupland in securing promotion. Still, there's plenty at stake at next month's Tour Championship. Join us for that next time. But for now, from Newmacker, it's goodbye.